hello and welcome. We're so happy that you've joined us for this special celebration. Again, I just noted a quick technical note for people on Zoom. If in the upper right corner of your screen, if you have the opportunity, please select speaker view in order to have Robin and Amani front and center when they're speaking. And I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Rebecca Snavely, the Executive Director of Action Kivu. I'm based in Los Angeles. And I can't believe it's been 10 years since my co-founder Kate Haight and I were introduced to our founding director, Amani Matabaro, by Kevin Seitz, who is joining us on this call. So much has changed and yet the bedrock of what we were building remains the same. We founded Action Kivu as a US nonprofit to raise funds and awareness to invest in the present and future of survivors of the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Eastern Congo through entrepreneurial training and education projects rooted in peace and equality. We advocate community-based initiatives and sustainable solutions developed by the members of the Congolese community that provide pathways for them to be agents for peace as they create a thriving society for all. Our imprint here in the US is small. Our other board members who join us here but are silent are Mo Hyman and new to our board, Alyssa Newman, and of course, Kate Haight. We couldn't do this work without our ever-growing team that Amani leads in Congo and a growing base of financial supporters, you all, here in the US and around the world. I can't name each and every person, but I'd like to highlight a few. Elisa Haight Carlton and the Modern Quilting Community, Margaret Johnson and Betty Murner and their community in Rhode Island, as well as Rotary Clubs from Rhode Island to Montecito, California. Bill and Annie McCumber and their family. Jewish World Watch from working directly with Amani's local organization to investing in the Women's Center and the Peace Market, to now partnering with Action Kivu and Dylan Henry Foundation in the Congo Peace School. The Pedagogical Institute of Los Angeles for creating and supporting two state-of-the-art preschool classrooms at the Congo Peace School and our major Peace School funding partner, the Dylan Henry Foundation, and their guardian donors, who made the first few years possible through Harriet Zaretsky, who I see on the call, in building and partnering in the Peace School. And last, but clearly not least, Robin Wright, our guest of honor, who has been involved personally from the beginning, and now through her company with Karen Fowler, Pour La Femme, supporting the construction of the Congo Peace School, have been investors in our sewing workshops, and who are our co-hosts for this celebration. It's my privilege to introduce our guests of honor. You may know Robin Wright, a gifted actor, director, filmmaker, entrepreneur, and activist. Her tireless advocacy for the people of Congo ranges from personal investments of finances and time to meeting with policymakers in Washington, DC, speaking at international events, to co-founding Pour La Femme as another way to raise awareness to our connection to Congo and our responsibility to the country's people. Like so many people who follow her journey, we are inspired by you, Robin, to take greater risks and action to create a more just and equitable world. Action Kivu's founding director, Amani Matabaro, was born and raised in Eastern Congo. A trained educator, he also studied Kenyan peace and nonviolence at the University of Rhode Island and has worked in Congo alongside esteemed university, including Johns Hopkins and the University of Washington in research and treatment of trauma. A staunch advocate of women's and children's rights, over a decade ago, Amani and his wife Amini started a local nonprofit in Congo, beginning by teaching women to sew. Amani's natural gift at community building, his vision for healing the world, and his inexhaustible actions grew that organization from a few sewing students to directly impacting the lives of more than 6,300 children and women through job training and education assistance. And now the Congo Peace School. I promised I wasn't going to cry. I get emotional when I talk about this. Okay. <laughs> ah. uh, in addition, 50,000 people benefit from Mamani's Clean Water Initiative, and his leadership indirectly affects the entire community of Mamosho of over 80,000 people, spreading the knowledge of peace, equality, and hope. It's my honor to pass the mic to Robin and Amani to discuss what that now looks like and our 10 year anniversary theme of resilience through community. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Amani. I Hi, cannot Robbie. wait to come see you again. We've been hoping to do that over the last five years, but I know it's difficult. It's very difficult. The children and the women of Momosho are waiting for Mama Robin to oh, come back. I can't wait to come hug them all. So I came to visit you uh, through the Enough Project almost 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. And 
if you could just give us a, an overall briefing of what societal changes and physical changes you have seen, your beautiful little empire that you've built at Action Kivu. Thank you so much. When you visited us 10, almost 10 years ago, uh, we were in a very small shacked kiosk with four pedal sewing machines. But when I try to see what has happened, I feel if I leave this planet, I think I will rest peacefully because of what has happened. Now, from the time you left Congo, our organization has been able to grow with support of people. Um, we have been able to graduate 512 um, women, young women in, voc in different vocational skills training. And today, all of them, 100% of women who have graduated from our programs are successful uh, social entrepreneurs in the community, able to take care of themselves, their children, and their families in the community as a whole. So we moved from a small shack kiosk where our center was, the center you visited, and today we have a complex. We have a Congo P school. We have a complex of a vocational skill training center, which is, I mean, the valley of hope, equality, and freedom for the people in my community. So when I look at the qualitative and the quantitative change that has happened over the 10 years, I feel blessed and I feel hopeful and that has happened because of you and all the people around Action Kivu and our amazing, beloved community of Action Kivu, um, beloved community. Is it so interesting? I remember having a couple of conversations with the ladies. And like you say in the beginning, it was the nascent stage. You had four pedal sewing machines and they were teaching each other and your dream and their dream was always we want to continue teaching others. So it's an in-house job training almost. Um, and I said, what is the most important thing that you need from us? And they said, we want to work. We want to learn a skill and feel purpose for ourselves as women and turn that kind of philosophy over to their children so that their children could continue to feel hope and promise for their own lives and reward. And it just brought tears to my eyes. I was like, there's nothing greater than having that internally as man, woman, child. And you have built that concept in your compound. You had a dream and you achieved that dream in 10 years. Bravo. Thank you. What is happening now with COVID? How have you guys been faring with the last four months being what they are? Did you have to shut down the center in any shape or form or everyone was kind of quarantining together? Yeah, with uh, the COVID, with the pandemic, I would say that it is only the school, the Congo P school, which is closed because all the schools around here are, are closed. The school is closed, but our vision and our mission and our goals are not closed. We have continued, we have continued doing some work. We, the school and the vocational training center have become a place for people at community level, especially young people, our teachers. They are now a contingent of volunteering to go out with loudspeakers and volunteer to raise awareness and educate people in rural areas on ways to prevent um, COVID, on way uh, to behave. We are working on a behavior change, uh, behavior change volunteering programming um, to teach people how to take care of themselves and prevent COVID. Uh, in the middle of a pandemic, in a context where our government and our health systems are not in a position to face the pandemic. We have seen how extreme poverty is affecting people and especially livelihoods. But we have women, young women, who are standing up and they don't want to be shut. They don't want to shut down. They, they are standing up and do some work from their homes. I was sharing a short story with Rebecca two days ago 
of a young woman who graduated from our program. And I visited her and she was making some masks from her home, from her room, using her sewing machine. She graduated from um, our two, year, two years ago program. And right now she's working. And I feel like it is closed, but the vision and the mission are up, changing lives, giving a new hope. Yeah. Um, the part of the education system at the Peace School, I'd love everybody to hear about and how you took basically the teachings of Martin Luther King about equality and hope and peace. And that's about community building and instilling that in the children because they are our future. How, how did you come up with this idea? Was this always something you had in the back of your head before you went forward with building the Peace School? Was that always going to be the philosophy of, of the teachings? Yeah, it was, it was always a dream. It was always a dream to build a school but centered on um, education, teaching people peace and nonviolence. But I had no idea, I had no clear idea how to do, how to do this. Uh, until the time uh, I visited Rhode Island and I was introduced to Professor Paul, who is the director of the Center of um, Peace and Nonviolence at the University of Rhode Island. And Professor Paul wel welcomed me to the program. And when I was exposed to the principles of nonviolence and peace based on the philosophy of Martin Luther King, I felt like this is exactly what I was dreaming about. This is exactly what I, I wanted to do. And I started jotting down uh, the principles, making sure they are part of our curriculum at the Congo Peace School, teaching equality, uh, teaching compassion, teaching positive values to make sure we transform our society, the Congolese society, which has been destroyed uh, by the ongoing violence. If there is a place where nonviolence is really needed, it is Congo because nonviolence hates violence. Yeah. And we're, we're using a lot of this phrase here today with the movements that are going on with Black Lives Matter, and people are saying silence is the violence. Absolutely, absolutely. We cannot shy away. We cannot just watch idly doing nothing. And if we do that, we are part of the people causing violence. We need to, everybody, that is the power we have as individuals, that we can make a choice. We can choose what to stand for. While some people decide to stand for violence, I am so happy to have met you and blessed to have met you and all our beloved community of people standing up for peace and nonviolence. So that gives me a new hope every day. <laughs> um, what is what is the vision for the coming years for, for you with your community center? Um, the vision for the coming years is to make sure we fully equip um, our Congo Peace School uh, and make sure our model, which is, uh, our model is uh, a new, we, we are dreaming to have a new education modeling for Congo and for Africa and break the chain of colonialism, um, hate, uh, this cycle of violence. We, we are dreaming to create something that really stands up inside the community somewhere and people from all over Congo, from all over the African Great Lakes, uh, with our neighbors and brothers in Rwanda who were faced with the genocide, come to our center and make sure they can learn something and go back hit. That is one. Number two is we want to start um, a community uh, agribusiness training center for women and youth and using uh, te new technologies um, in organic farming to make sure our women, our girls, our sisters and young brothers can stand up on the front line and stand up against food insecurity, which is a big problem in a country with 80 million 
hectares of arable lands, but malnutrition is killing most of the children. Many of our children don't celebrate their fifth anniversary because of uh, food insecurity and malaria. We want to make sure we change people's mindset and make sure our school, our center becomes the center where everyone says, I want to change things, I must go to Congo Peace School or to that center. That is what we are dreaming uh, and we are sure it is going to happen with you, of course, with our beloved community, with our amazing Action Kivu family, we are sure it is going to happen. So great, so great. Um, and I know you will. <laughs> You're such a soldier and you never quit. And that's what it takes is never quitting your passion. It's a passion. And it becomes that you you basically infect everyone. I've noticed that when I was there with you, how your energy and your positivity and your optimism and your diligence it infects everybody in the greatest way. They're like, I want to be like Amani. <laughs> I want to do what Amani does. Um, what else? What else? What else do you want to talk about? We have so many things. Uh, I would love for you to talk about the. This commitment to signing up for $700 a year, what that can do if one is able to donate, what can that $700 a year do for the children and the women? If somebody gives us $700, $700 every month, this amount of money is going to make a significant and huge difference in the lives of the children at our, at our school. It is going to enable us pay our teachers to continue teaching uh, peace and non-violence. It is going to enable us to um, prepare and teach entrepreneurial skills that is badly needed in, in the Congo for our young women and, uh, and youth. It is going to, it is going to, continue, uh, to continue helping us teach transformational leadership. We, we need to prepare a new generation that is going to take over and make Congo a better place to live and not feel every time you need to flee. Young people in the Congo want to flee. They want to flee because of violence and poverty and everything. $700 will make a huge difference to teach transformational leadership and people who stay in Congo. $700 will make a difference in teaching trauma healing to the children because we have mental health as one of the pillars of our curriculum at Congo Peace School. So $700 is going to help us maintain uh, our, our leadership. We want to take the leadership in organic farming and make this something formal and protect our environment. Yeah, and that's why very soon we are expecting to have solar equipment at the Congo Peace School. And this is going to make also a significant difference and it goes a long way with our, our vision of not harming our environment. If we want to stay nonviolent, nonviolent within ourselves, but nonviolent with our community around us, but nonviolent with our environment. Yeah. So 700 will make a significant difference in the lives of the children and the entire community around the Congo Peace School and inside Congo. And inside Congo. Is there a message you would love to send to all the, yes, the supporters, but we're going to hopefully keep spreading this little interview. And I want everyone to hear what, what your message is about the new future. We are, we are in, yes, a pandemic because of COVID, but we're in a pandemic around a lot of other big issues. One being racial divide. Um, and how do you see as a teacher, a mentor, a guru to these, these women and children, which you are, what is, what is your message for the new, the new youth? A message of hope. A message of hope for peace and nonviolence. We should not give up. I'm sending a message since the outbreak of the pandemic and all the instability uh, in the world. I'm talking to people and sending a message of hope 
and peace. And I'm telling people, never ever accept your fears to be bigger than your dreams. Let's keep dreaming for peace. Let's keep standing up for peace and non-violence and equality in the world. There is no need to continue spreading our racism, hatred. All those have their limits. All those have their limits. We want to stand up. We want to continue standing up for peace and non-violence. But another message I'm sending to our beloved community on this call today, it is a message of gratitude. It is a thank you message for accepting to be part of this movement, this family. Together, we can make it. To make, together, we can make a big difference. Yeah. Rebecca, do you want to close out with something? Because I, I couldn't top that one. <laughs> we can't top Amani's great closure. It's so very true. It's also something that has really taken the forefront um, just in my philosophy about it's reprogramming. It's breaking conditions that we have grown up with. The way we were taught, the way the children were taught there, what they saw, what they witnessed and they repeated, whether it was from their fathers, um, the militia, the horrible atrocities that have gone there, and they grow up from a very young age just saying, oh, that's the way it is. The way we're going through it here with all of these cases coming out of women that were abused and we just grew up thinking, oh, that's the way it is. And I think it's a great, it's a platform that you are providing for these young people to say, you don't have to grow up with that conditioning that we all did. We can teach you a new way, a new way of how to, how to treat girls, not just you never hit a girl. That's a very American thing. I, that's the only thing I remember growing up with is boys were told you never hit a girl but they can treat girls disrespectfully in this way, you know? And coming up with a new, it's a new Bible almost. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a new Bible. It's a new Bible. Um, we, we, every time we talk, every time we talk with our students at school and they say, oh, we think, we think, we discover that in our church, they don't tell, they don't tell us everything. They don't teach us everything. When, when, when we engage them in standing up against corruption, which is the cancer destroying Congo and Africa, and they say, oh, our pastors, our priests never talk about corruption. So it is a new Bible. Our school, our, our new uh, education model is our new Bible. And we are planting the seeds and let's see what happens in two or three years ahead. We will be alive and we will witness it. We will witness the change for which we are planting seeds right now. And look what you've done in this 10 years. What you've come from is incredible. You have a self-sustaining compound. You can grow your food. The women have a vocational skill. They have a job. They have businesses that they've started on their own. 500 graduates. Did you ever in a million years think it could come this far? It is happening because of you. Last year, we graduated 43, 45 women and each and every single one of them got a sewing machine, uh, a, a complete kit, graduation kit. And they are using them and they are making their own small businesses and they're making income. And that is equality in practice. Give us that, and forgive me for not pronouncing her name wrong. Is it Anyuraiti? Anuarit. Anuarit. Tell us the, the quick story about her before we, we say goodbye. Anuarit, Anuarit is an amazing young child, young female child I met one day when I was touring, I was visiting our programs, and it was a day of adult literacy program for women. And I met Anwarit inside a classroom of old ladies when Anwarit was only 10 years old. 
And I asked her, what are you doing here? And she said, I am here because I was never given a chance to go to school. And I said, how old are you? She said, that time she was almost eight. And I told her, Marit, you have no place here. What do you need to be in formal education? She said, if I get a school uniform, if I get pens and crayons, I would go to school. We provided that. And Anwarit is the leader among our female children at the Congo Peace School. We enrolled her two years ago, and she's taking leadership. She's, when I look at her, I feel I am accomplishing what I'm dreaming. Uh, so Anwarit is going to, she's going to take over. When I asked her last time, what do you want to become before the pandemic? And she said, I want to lead Congo Peace School. Uh. <laughs> Papa Amani. You know, you are. You're the papa to many children. So Anwarit is so amazing and it is a good example to show that with very little we can make a big difference. Right. Yeah. I introduced her to Rebecca and she was like, oh, why other children around were afraid they won't, don't want to do the interviews? And she was, oh, I volunteered to do the interview. And this is how she met Rebecca and did an amazing thing. Oh. She's 10, she knows already what she wants to become. But she was never given a chance to go to school for no other reason than her gender. Like my mother, my mother, my late mother was never given a chance to go to school for no other reason than her gender. But when I look at my uncles, who are my mother's brothers, no one among them could be as intelligent as my mother was when she was alive. So I say, Anwarit, we give you a chance to get an education and maybe you are going to change. You're going to be the first female president in Congo and change all the crazy things going around here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Robin, did you have any other follow-up? Did you want to? No, I, f I feel like the only thing we didn't talk about was the solar right. aspect of, which basically is, is providing them all of the energy needed. Is that right? Amani, um, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Yeah, the solar system we are expecting in a few months it is not going to cover all our needs, but it is going to cover 50% of, of what we need in terms of energy at Congo Peace School because it will enable us to power our computer and conference room um, and the domes. But we still have all the campus, uh, we still have all the other places in the public uh, and public areas which needs power and all the other equipments we have. But this is already a big difference if we stop using uh, generators killing our environment. And the generator is costing us money to kill our environment. It is like the violence. Violence costs money to destroy the world. It yes. is like hate it. It costs money to destroy what is around us. So um, the solar system that we are expecting to get is going to make a huge and significant difference. It is going to translate our friendship with our environment. Yeah. And you're going to be a great example for others to, to follow and repeat. Yeah. If we could have more of these peace schools that are also job opportunities for women and, and children that were never allowed to go to school or learn a skill. Yeah, yeah. We want to make sure in our system, the, our, our model, we are really combining all these um, uh, green environment, being nonviolent with our environment, but at the same time, women, youth are using these new technologies with renewable energy in, in their organic agribusiness um, practices. It's fantastic. Rebecca, do you want to you want to close out for I us? I will close us out. Thank you so much for having that conversation with Amani Robin. We so appreciate your investment in in not only Action Kivu but in Congo as a whole. And I know we could actually talk for hours about like oh. why why you chose Congo. Um, so maybe another future 
future event. Um, but we are incredibly grateful, so thank you. Thank you for having me. And Amani, as you know, I'm always, always inspired anytime we talk. So we are, we are here to support you. And so as we look to that future of even more Congo Peace Schools eventually, or more Peace Schools around the globe, we see you and so many others as we continue to grow our reach and impact. So if you feel inspired by anything you heard today, if, if something that Robin or Imani shared really moved you, we'd like you to ask you to take action. It's 10 years of action, let's keep it going. So here's my to-do list for you, because I know in this time of a global uprising, I'm looking every day and like, okay, what's my to-do list for today, just to keep it all. So number one, follow Action Kivu on Instagram, Facebook, and or Twitter, if you're not already doing that. And number two, please repost a photo from our account sharing what you heard today that enlightened or inspired you and ask others to follow us and to donate. Um, you know, I have a, we have a bunch of students on there. You could choose one of their stories, something you could find on Orit is on our website. We're also going to launch today a five-day giveaway with Black-owned businesses on our social media and event page. So once I get that up, I'm gonna push it out and please push that out further. We have on our call, I think a few of those um, business owners and Bruti had, put, had hosted something back in um, before the pandemic where we actually got to get together and celebrate black owned businesses in LA. So it's local in LA, but, it's the, but the giveaway is global. So encourage people to donate to that giveaway. And then speaking of donating, Every dollar truly makes a difference. And as we look to the future of the Congo Peace School in particular, we need more and more partners to ensure its success as it grows to full capacity. We've had amazing guardian donors through the Dylan Henry Foundation. We've had a lot of you donate to our Patreon page for the school, but we're looking long-term. So if you can commit today to $700 per year, $700 per year, that's $2 a day, to Action Kivu for one student to attend the school. They get daily meals, supplies, these amazing backpacks that Imani, of course, secured in. Um, teachers, staff, a school counselor, and a nurse that are unheard of in other schools in Congo who are committed to education rooted in equality, respect, peace, and nonviolence. So if, if you can't manage $2 a day and $700 a year, if you can talk to people in your book clubs or your classrooms or in your friend circle and you can do this together, it would be amazing to get more and more people committed to $700 a year for the school. So you can head to actionkivu.org to learn more, to donate, to set up a monthly donation for $60 a month, and note that it's for the Congo Peace School. So again, just everyone here and everyone on YouTube, and as we share this more, thank you so much for your generosity of your time, your efforts, and your funds. We're truly grateful, and we look forward to another 10 years. Woo! Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye, Amani. I hug you from afar. Bye, yeah, all Bye, day. Social Bye, distance hugs. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.